Today is the last Sunday in the season of Lent, 2024. This year, we have spent our season hearing about those saints of the church that travel with us, offering us companionship and support, as the wild beasts and the angels did for Jesus during his temptation. Apostles like Andrew and Peter, evangelists like Mark and John, martyrs like Stephen and the Holy Innocents, and others like Paul and Joseph, the guardian of Jesus. But let me ask you a question. Can you name all 12 apostles? Think about it for a moment. Okay, let's start with the easy ones. There's Peter and his brother Andrew. Speaking of brothers, there's James and John, those great sons of Zebedee. There's Thomas, also called the twin, and Matthew, who history holds was both an apostle and an evangelist. And let's not forget Judas. But that's seven. So what about the other five? Now, some of you might very well be able to pull from the recesses of your Sunday school lessons learned throughout your lives, names like Philip and Bartholomew, James the Lesser, Thaddeus, or the one who is called the other Judas. And then there's Simon the Canaanite. And if you can, congratulations and kudos to the Sunday school teachers of your childhood. Today, we will turn our attention to a few of them as we take a moment to remember three of the lesser-known apostles, Philip and James, and then Matthias. Now, Philip and James share a feast day, that is, May 3rd. For James, little is known about him beyond his name. He is called James, the son of Alphaeus, in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. So we know his name. And we also know that Jesus chose him to be one of the twelve. We know that this is not the James we read about in Acts, the son of Clopas, brother, if you will, of Jesus, eventual bishop of Jerusalem, and traditional author of the letter of James found later in the New Testament. Again, all we really know about this James is his name and that he was called Philip, on the other hand, gives us a little more. Philip came from the same town as Peter and Andrew, that is, Bethsaida in Galilee. Jesus went out and found Philip, directly calling him. I'm sure you remember the story. It was then that Philip went to find Nathanael to tell him about Jesus when Nathanael asks his infamous question, Can any good come out of Nazareth? Before the feeding of the 5,000, it was Philip who Jesus asked the question, Where shall we buy the bread for all these people to eat? And even beyond that, Philip gives us a few more appearances across John's Gospel. These two men were part of that group that Jesus sent out, given the task of proclaiming the good news and the power to cast out demons. Apostle comes from the word apostolos, that means to be sent. The most remarkable thing, I think, about James and Philip, however, are just how unremarkable they are. And yet, they are foundational to the church of Jesus Christ. Now, last week we discussed Paul. Paul, that once great persecutor of the Christians, who then became the greatest of the evangelicals. Great remained great. It just changed course. A few weeks ago, I mentioned a painting titled Adoration of the Magi to get us to that second chapter in Matthew, where after the Magi leave, we read about the martyr of the innocents. The Magi were wise men. They were kings, astrologers, Zoroastrians who came from a foreign land and returned to that land still as kings and astrologers and Zoroastrians, people of great import, people who would be listened to, and what they said would be remembered. Great remained great. But James, who we sang about in our hymn today, was nicknamed James the Lesser 
just to make sure you don't confuse him with James, the brother of John, one of the great sons of Zebedee. Here's an interesting fact that may seem unrelated, but please stay with me. There are 339 million people living in the United States right now. I'm sure you know a few. I am sure there are many who we all know the names of because their names are well known. There are countless others over the history of our country. People like George Washington and Martin Luther King Jr. People who we look at as great Americans. Though greatness and fame are not reflective of each other. There are more great Americans that you have never heard of than ones that you have. That, I promise you. There are more people working together daily to care for this country we share that might simply be recorded as a name on a sign-up sheet than there are people of national acclaim. And the truth is that this country needs every one of them. How true is that for the church as well? Philip and James remind me of the critical importance of all of those faithful people that might not be as famous or well-known as others, but regardless, God has called them and God loves them. Some people, yes, end up like Peter or a pope or a bishop or in a high and recognized office, and others end up as pastors and deacons and the like. But even more are simply and powerfully members of the body of Christ that we share as the church, just as loved, just as needed, just as important, and just as called by Jesus Christ to share the good news so that all people will know him. I think of people like Theda Suggs from St. James Lutheran Church in Fedville, North Carolina, or Alberta Podworth here at Faith Lutheran Church, not known nationally or around the world, but indispensable to the mission and the work of God's kingdom. And with that, let's find our way to Matthias. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, hey, what do you mean Matthias? He wasn't in the list you gave earlier. You would be correct. Matthias is somewhat of an outlier. See, across the four Gospels, in each, Jesus calls the disciples, and Matthias is not on any of those lists. In fact, he wasn't called by Jesus at all. We find Matthias in the book of Acts, after Jesus ascends. It's then where Peter raises the issue that in the absence of Judas, one must be picked to replace him. Two men were nominated, one named Joseph and the other Matthias. The apostles prayed to the Holy Spirit to differentiate between the two of them. And then there were lots cast, and those lots fell on Matthias, who joined the ranks of the apostles. Matthias, the apostle called by another way, you could say, the one who took a different path. And in that distinction, I believe we can find a divine beauty in the reality of the many and various ways that God calls us, uses us, and loves us. James and Philip Remind us that though not everyone is a Peter or a Paul, we are all still seen and known and called, and God's love is not dependent on the stature of our name. Matthias reminds us that not all paths look the same, and yet still we are all seen, we are all known and called, and God loves us, period, not because of how we got here. So as this Lent draws to an end, in the changing of the seasons, in the preparing for the summer, in the weight of all the world and those little voices telling us we need to do more or be more or leave more of a legacy, let our legacy be how much God loves us, each and every one. And as we make our way to Palm Sunday, it might be tempting to look back over these past 40 days 
and compare our journey with someone else's. Though Matthias is here to remind us all that the thing which is paramount is not how you got here, but how much God loves you. The story is not about how long it took you to get here. The story is about how much God loves you to hell and back, literally. Amen.